Hi, I'm Dr Shelley Moram. I lead the Functional Nitrides Research Group at the Department of Materials at Imperial College London. I'm curious about complexity in materials and the new physics that that leads to. I think in academia our role is to create the future, not to be swept up in the tide of people that are already going in a particular direction. For me and my group, this feels like being a 15th century explorer all over again. In a way, we're setting out from a home port, looking at the horizon and sailing forth, trying to find El Dorado. But for us, El Dorado is something a little bit different. It's the ability to produce any material with the properties that we want on demand, which is not something you can currently do with a library of conventional materials that we have available. The last hundred years have really all been about exploring the periodic table, about understanding how each of the elements behaves and finding out what happens when you put them together into compounds. But in the periodic table there are approximately a hundred useful elements. We combine those together to produce thousands upon thousands of useful compounds. So the most important element of the 20th century has got to be silicon. In order to make the transistors that are the foundation of modern computing, you start with silicon, you add small quantities of other elements, including phosphorus and boron, and you also combine silicon with oxygen to give you silicon oxide. Of course, there's a limit to how much we can do with uh, relatively simple compounds, and I think what we're doing now in the 21st century is starting to explore that next level of complexity. Something big is about to happen in my field, and this has come about because of what happens when we put two or more materials together. You can make nanostructured two-dimensional layers where the majority of the material consists of an interface between one layer and the next and the next and the next. You start to create emergent properties that don't belong to either of the individual ingredient materials. As you can imagine when we start nanostructuring this opens up billions of possibilities. So our challenge is to discover which combination of materials will give us the properties that we want. So like those early explorers, the map is wide open in front of us. We don't know what lies on it. We're going forth to find out. The search for El Dorado is on. Stepping back from my field, I think three important things are coming together. The first is advances in simulation. Secondly, advances in experimental capability. And thirdly, advances in our analytical techniques. For the 15th century explorers, they had a vision of El Dorado, which was overseas, over the Atlantic. Uh, for us, El Dorado is something different. It's the ability to specify a property and create the material that will give us exactly that. To do so, we need advances in all of those three areas. So over the next five to ten years, we might see the development of engineering clinics where we could use these advances in simulations to predict the properties of materials ab initio and use them to solve problems from industry. In the next 20 to 30 years, we also need to think about what lies ahead in that open space on the map where nothing is currently present. I mean, it is difficult to describe in detail something that would happen or something that might only happen in 30 years' time, something that we barely even have the foundations for yet. But if you were to make an imaginative leap, we might say, what happens when you combine electrons, holes, and photons? For example, developing a new field like polaritonics. Beyond the constraints of electronics, I see us accessing new device physics. The way to do that is partly about developing new materials and partly about thinking of completely new ways to construct devices. This is something I would love to see developing in the next 20 years.